but it's kind of red and orange in color and it's just sort of like exploded onto a plate. It looks like a cracked egg. <laughs> Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Jeonju, South Korea. Today we're going on a day trip to a place called Gunsan, which is on the, the west coast of North Joela province. A car is coming to pick us up and we're going on a day trip. It's going to be about a 45 minute drive to get to Gunsan. First stop is a very famous place for a, a snack, a sweet snack called hotte. Some versions are fried in lots of oil, but this one is just uh, like seared on a hot plate, so it's not it's not oily. And they have this little instruction card, and they say to be very careful because it could be really piping hot on the inside. Oh, I've got a little hole in mine. Mm. Just like brown sugar, melted brown sugar on the inside. And then with like a sticky, gooey, kind of crunchy wrapper. Yeah, it's very sweet. We just took a little drive to an area of town and we are gonna walk through an old part of Gunsan which is along the old railroad track. This railroad was used especially during the Japanese invasion and it was the main transportation route. But it is now not used anymore and it's turned into kind of a, a leisure walking path with little shops and boutiques and restaurants and cafes along, the, along each side. It's kind of kind of nice to walk along this community, this railroad community. One of the greatest indicators of a fantastic restaurant is a long line of people that are waiting, local people that are willing to wait for food. We have just arrived at a restaurant called Bok Son Lu and they specialize in a noodle dish called Jampong, which is a mix of seafood and noodles. We're actually on the side of the road now. The line wraps all the way around to the front and to the main road. This will be my first time to ever eat the dish that we're about to eat. And I don't even really know what it is, but it's amazing how waiting in line, my anticipation has just skyrocketed. I am so excited to try whatever we're gonna eat. And I'm getting really hungry standing in this line. Very little restaurant, but very packed. And in the main room, they have some tables. And then in the back room here, you go through a couple doors and you come to some low tables sitting on the floor. The aroma of the food in here smells incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason why everybody is waiting in line. It is just a spectacular bowl full of mixed seafood. There are mussels in here, there's lots of squid, there are cockles in here, and probably some other seafood that I don't even see, and then it's topped with a bunch of pork, and then there should be noodles all the way on the bottom. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. You can taste the dried chilies in there. It has a like a rich seafood flavor to it. And it's it's just just slightly a little bit salty, not too salty, but just just pure like seafood chili flavor. Well, it's a little bit chewy, but then it's it has a flavor that's almost like chicken. It's so good. Mm. You definitely have to eat some of the shells before you get to the noodles. Otherwise, you can't even you can't even get to the noodles. So you have to. It's an eating process to get to the noodles. Open this guy up. Oh, wow. 
that's very fresh. It barely even just a slight seafoody flavor. A little bit gelatinous. A little bit, a little squid like. I think I'm gonna add in a little more chili. They have this little dish of dry chili flakes. That seafoody chili broth is wonderful. I've eaten quite a bit of the shellfish and I can now see the noodles. They kind of taste like um, like ramen noodles, but they're they've um, they're fresh and they have just kind of soaked up all of that wonderful, spicy, delicious broth. Mm, they're really good. And when you're eating noodles in Korea, it is perfectly acceptable to slurp, which increases the the deliciousness of them. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a piece of onion, dip it into a little bit of this dark sauce. Mm. That tastes kind of like Vegemite, but maybe a little bit sweeter. And then with that onion, that onion is nice and crisp and very juicy. That's a great combination. You'll love this, especially if you love shellfish. The noodles were good, but the noodles just kind of wrapped it all together and gave it some more of a, a filling component to it. All about that broth and that seafood. That line is never ending. I can, and this is, uh, this is the middle of the week. I think it's uh, Tuesday right now. I can only imagine how long the line stretches on the weekends when people come from all over Korea to eat here. But it was well worth it and I would be more than happy to wait in line again for that same bowl of noodles. We're walking around the downtown, old historical town of Gunsan, and there are a bunch of museums and historical buildings, and it especially has a lot of influence from the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Sure. This is a well-known coffee shop. I got my typical black Americano. Walking around the old town of Gunsan, I noticed just about everybody had these yellow bags. And that's because they went to a really, really famous bakery that just about everybody who comes to this city goes to buy something from. So we just arrived at the bakery. Everything is good? That is a crazy bakery, it's so busy. I don't think it's even a really busy time right now, but there are loads of people just running around grabbing trays full of bread. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. That's like curry chicken and broccoli. All wrapped in, up in like a, a gooey crispy bread. And then for my next one, I got a bacon and egg bun. Look at that egg just sunk right into the middle of there and then a nice slab of bacon. Mm-hmm, a fluffy bun base. It almost is like a hard boiled egg, but in fried egg form. Oh yeah. I got the yolk in that bite. Again, there is a lot of history of Japanese in Gunsan, and so we've just stopped by a historical Japanese house right in the downtown historic district. There's a nice Japanese garden in the yard, and then a number of different houses. Maybe this is the main house right here? Not too far away from the Japanese house that we just visited is a Japanese temple. So we're gonna have a look around here for a little while. I 
think most of the market is not open at this time, but we have come here to specifically eat at a restaurant called Angela. Just wait until. Okay, this is another small little cozy restaurant, and they especially specialize in japchae. Also, a couple of other dishes. This one is a fish cake. A soup, a fish cake in egg. They also have tteokbokki here, which is one of the most famous Korean street food dishes or snacks. The rice cakes uh, or the the rice rolls, and then with all the chili sauce all over it, there are some leeks in here as well. Mm. It's sweet, a little bit spicy, and has a very kind of chewy texture to it. Mm. Mm. I think that's a fish broth, nice and peppery. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's like a has a gummy texture. It's like a gummy fish cake. The other little snacks are kind of just extras, but the main dish that this place serves is the japche, which is the these are sweet potato noodles, I believe. And then this one is quite a quite a pretty bowl of it. It is topped with a a bunch of julienne cucumbers. There's some bean sprouts on here, some corn, or no, those are all bean sprouts. And then also some I see some chili paste underneath it. And then what I really love is that massive amount of um, sesame seeds. Kind of toss it all up to get all of that mixed in. Mix it in with all the, oh, that aroma of sesame immediately comes out. All right, I think that's pretty well stirred. Let me get some of this over onto my plate. Those are long noodles, okay. That sesame flavor is really good. It has like a an almost like peanut butter sesame flavor to it. And then it's a little bit, it's a little on the sweet side, but you got those fresh cucumbers in there as well. That is a really cool little spot and the owners are really nice. Food is a little bit sweet for me, but it was still a really nice little place. We are somewhere near to the harbor and we've stopped by this giant fish market, wholesale market and restaurant complex. We're gonna have some seafood. Tasty? Sample tasty. Oh, this is octopus. grilled octopus? This is a sample. Thank you. Okay. A sample of grilled octopus. Mm, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you, you too. Yeah. Mm, that's chewy and flavorful. Yeah. This is another fantastic aquatic marine fish market. All kinds of seafood, all fresh in tanks. It's very similar to the fish market in Seoul, except this one is a lot more relaxed and kind of easygoing, but just as much fresh seafood. This is called flatfish. You can just choose the fish that you want, and depending on the type of fish, some of them are probably Excuse cooked, me. and then others of them are eaten as sashimi. So we chose one of them, one of the flatfish. I'm not sure what the English name is, but the fish they they just sit at the bottom of the tank or at the bottom of the water, and they're very flat. This fish looked like this about one minute ago. Thank you. I think there's some seating upstairs. We got some other dishes as well. And then with the bones and the head from that flatfish, they're gonna make some kind of dish as well. This is gonna be an amazing, incredibly fresh seafood meal. It is happening again. Our entire table has just been filled, completely filled with an assortment of all things from the sea. And when I say all things from the sea, I don't just mean the raw fish, which by the way in, in Korean is called hui. We did get the raw fish, but there are so many other seafoods. There's shrimp, there's some giant cockles, there's abalone, there is a, a sea cucumber, which has just sort of 
like splattered onto a plate. There's something I've always wanted to try, which is called a sea pineapple, which is a type of sea squirt that looks kind of like a little grenade. Um, or it looks kind of like a pineapple, but it's kind of red and orange in color and it's just sort of like exploded onto a plate. It looks like a cracked egg on a plate. And then there's also something called a spoon worm. So I've got some wasabi and some soy sauce. I gotta go in for that flatfish first. And just, this literally was swimming in the tank just about 10 minutes ago. It is pure. A little dip. Oh yeah, it is superb. Mm. It has a little bit of a, a jelly texture to it with a little bit of texture, but just a pure, pure flavor. It's like a, it's a white meat fish and a little bit fishy and a little bit slimy in a wonderful kind of way. It is time for me to sample this sea pineapple. And well, that's kind of like a hard, kind of like sandy, outer shell. So I just break off a piece. Oh, break off a piece. And just suck it up. Okay, suck that whole thing. You don't eat the shell, just all that inside. It looks kind of like crab eggs. First time for a sea pineapple. Oh, wow. You're definitely not gonna like this if you don't like seafoody flavor. That is some serious seafoody flavor. It's kind of like it kind of tastes like like um, a very very salty oyster. Mm, yeah, kind of like oyster, but even more even more slimy and even more salty. That is some extreme seafood. Got to get a piece of the raw garlic in there, and then some of this chili paste, or is this a bean paste? Also, put that in a raw fish lettuce wrap have to one bite this. Wow. That's incredible. Mm. That raw garlic is powerful, but mild. And then that extra like bean, salty, fermented taste. It's amazing. And then finally, one more thing we have. In scientific terms, it's called Eurekis eucinctus. And it's also called the spoon worm. I don't think I really need to mention, I think we can all figure out what it looks like. But just in case, it is also known as the penis fish. Should I dip it? Oh, <laughs> that just fell, slipped out of my chopsticks. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to dip this in, this, in the wasabi. Mm. It's kind of a, it's not a, not a strong taste, but it's very, very chewy. It's like squid times 10. Time for the sea, sea cucumber. Oh wow, this is, this looks slimy. Dip it into this sauce. Mmm. That kind of has like a, a cartilage texture to it, but then it's like slimy at the same time. Oh, the sea cucumber is pretty good. We also got a plate of silkworms. Mm, yeah, yeah, those are silkworms. Mm, they're really, really big and juicy silkworms. They are, they kind of have a little bit of a starchy texture to them. And then, actually, kind of nutty as well. This is some seriously fresh abalone. Oh yeah, abalone, yeah, it's not salty, it's just like an oyster, but with a crisp texture instead of that jelly-like texture. That is good, that's really good. Over here on this table is the soup that they made with the fish bones. And this looks wonderful as well. All of those fish bones, there are a bunch of leeks in here, some kind of vegetable, and that beautiful chili broth. Yeah, that's good. You can taste the fish in there. It is uh, not too salty, but you can taste the chili oil as well. Mm. 
the time has come for me to now try the some kind of this is some kind of a cockle, but this is kind of a kind of a frightening looking <laughs> shellfish. It's rather veiny and bloody, and there are some random little segments, and there's some like hairy algae growing on the shell. Kind of looks like I'm gonna need the spoon to sort of pry it out. Let's see. Let me test. Have they loosened it? Try to loosen that up. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was a little messy. <laughs> oh, wow. Very, very seafoody again. Very salty, it tastes like the salt water. I would call that one of the more extreme or maybe intense seafood meals that I've ever had. It was incredibly good, but you definitely have to love seafood to eat a meal like this. I gotta admit that the sea pineapple was pretty extreme and I had that one slurp and that was, that was good for the meal for me. Um, it's really salty but really unique. If you get a chance to try a sea pineapple, you should definitely try it. It has been a fantastic day all the way from that seafood noodle soup to this extraordinary seafood feast. Uh, I'm gonna say goodnight from Gunsan and the seafood market. It's been a fantastic day. Thank you all for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I would love to hear from you. And also make sure you subscribe for lots more food and travel videos. And I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm. A fluffy, a fluffy bun base. Mm -hmm. Did I get like blood dripping down? Uh. It climbs up my chopstick. <gasps> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, whoa. Look at that. <gasps>